Welcome back to Comic Book Historians. I'm Alex Grant. Go ahead and click on that juicy red subscribe button down below. Also, don't forget to check out my book, Understanding Superhero Comic Books, available on Amazon and other online retailers. Born in a world of ink and paper, the characters of Roy Crane leapt from the pages and into the hearts and minds of readers across America. The comic strip medium was still in its nascent stage, while characters and story developments were very popular in the flyover country or middle America of the United States, where the NEA syndicate sold its strips. Although it's a high-quality strip and seminal in comic storytelling, the big city newspapers would raise their eyebrows and choose not to use a lot of NEA material because they didn't want to appeal to the hicks. Frankly, it was their loss because the rest of the country got to enjoy a fantastic comic strip from a very well-paid comic strip creator, Crane, who ranked up there in comic pioneering with Chester Gould, Harold Gray, and E.C. Seeger. His work, rich in thematic depth, moves seamlessly across genres from high-stakes adventure and suspense to light-hearted humor, from critical social commentary to depictions of sexuality and diverse cultures. Crane's comic strips weren't just about entertainment. They were also chronicling the zeitgeist of cultural development at the time from the 1920s all the way through to the Second World War, while developing seven key pioneering steps in comics. 1. Evolution of Character Development and Storytelling In 1926, Crane introduced us to the world of Wash Tubbs, a naive adventurer who is engaged in daily gags and the occasional adventure. One such gag is shown here, where Crane inserts himself into his comic, an early example of meta-narrative in comics. Wash Tubbs's life took a turn when Captain Easy, a seasoned mercenary, entered the strip in 1929, eventually becoming a main sensation in his own right. He was a super strong southern wonder of a man. He was a gruff lone wolf character with a dark shadowy past who smoked a good cigar and toughened up the lead character Tubbs in a similar manner as Wolverine did to Kitty Pride. Although Wash Tubbs was chasing girls in worldly adventures in the 1920s, Easy had him grow up, teach him how to fight, and survive survive in the dark and real world of the 1930s. He really became the series' action hero. He became the Rambo of the Far East. There was still an occasional daily gag between larger continuities like this one, mimicking the format of a Little Nemo strip. Here Tubbs fell out of his dream and bed in the last panel. This is one of the early comic parodies, so it's a play on a comic trope. Once 1942 hits, the Wash Tubbs Daily Strip transitioned into a Captain Easy only set of continuities where the feds actually send him into Asia for covert missions to foil the Japanese invasions. Captain Easy gained an adversary during World War II, a German named the Baron, where they develop a well-formed and mutual hatred, which comes to a conclusion in this sequence of 1941 dailies. Their hate is quite palpable and comparable to the rivalry between Starenko's Nick Fury and Hydra's Baron von Strucker. His next strip started in 1943, Buzz Sawyer, which had war scenes during the peak of World War II, which were both compelling and impactful for enthusiasts of the war genre. Crane strips weren't merely about adventure, they tackled significant social and cultural themes. A 1934 Wash Tubbs comic delivered a powerful commentary on organized crime and its clash with the law, likely linked to the 1920s mob led by Al Capone. Another strip portrayed the theme of culture shock. In 1928, Wash Tubbs attempted to befriend an Algerian local only to be met with an unexpected and to some comedic reaction. A 1932 Wash Tub strip provided a visceral sense of a villain's evil as a ruthless, pig-eyed ship captain <coughs> mercilessly killed a man who tried to escape his captivity. Crane did a great job enabling the audience to despise the murderer, allowing them to rejoice later at his comeuppance, demonstrating that the comic lived by an eye-for-an-eye -eye mentality. When other higher-brow strips avoided the reality of marijuana, Roy Crane decided to confront the topic in a 1942 Captain Easy Sunday, even showing the plant itself. One historical bit demonstrated by Crane in 1933 were these dailies devoted to the ins and outs of the difficulties and basics behind old-time whale hunting. This is, of course, before we were all enlightened by its barbarism in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. 
Crane demonstrated a variety of influences. For example, in 1934, he has a character in Wash Tubs teach one how to reflect upon classic works like those by John Legata, a fashion magazine illustrator who knew how to make women look sexy. A 1934 Captain Easy Sunday strip showcases Crane's interest in Far East architecture when they go to Tibet to find treasure portraying a lamazari with a Tibetan window style similar to that of Doctor Strange designed by Steve Ditko in 1963. 1934, Captain Easy Sunday panels depict another Far East village religion in some fun, fantastic panels by Crane with a giant serpent encircling Earth much like the Midgard serpent in the old Viking myths, portrayed later by Walt Simonson. Photo reference from magazines was another strong influence to create a long-form adventure newspaper strip allowing Crane to visually depict faraway lands. These depictions, for instance, were influenced by photos from National Geographic, bringing his readers on a visual journey to exotic locations. Crane also often used photo references of famous actors and political figures to create characters and drawings from various photographs of the 1920s to the 1930s. Despite being a cartoonist, Crane was no stranger to imbuing his work with elements of subtle sexuality, which was apparently even as early as 1926 in this wash tub strip. A 1927 strip portrayed a sexy serial widow, driving men to spend their money on her, leading to their doom. 1940 brought an interesting depiction of a Hollywood starlet in a Captain Easy Sunday strip. It was a clear indication that even back then, there were certain ladies in Hollywood you just don't mess with. In a 1934 Captain Easy Sunday strip, Crane depicted a village princess as a captive turned slave who is on the brink of suicide to avoid her living conditions. Captain Easy stops her and buys her freedom in a scene drawn with simplicity and purpose. This Buzz Sawyer 1945 Daily News strip held beautiful craftsmanship by Roy Crane, which which took place when World War II was over and Buzz was ready to celebrate. Low-brow humor kept readers coming back for more, like the situation here when Crane had Captain Easy throw out funny one-liners like this one during an action sequence from 1936. Another one occurred when Wash Tubbs became king of a small country and he demonstrated which type of resume got the position in a 1933 daily. In another scenario, Tubbs and Easy stumbled upon a murder scene during a home invasion, leading to a humorously awkward escape in 1933. A 1940 Wash Tubbs Sunday strip introduced an eccentric character Goldie, an attractive goofball who demonstrated a prank that involved ketchup on the chest to feign blood and sexiness, an effective gag used in horror films for decades. This panel in 1938 shows that good old Wash Tubbs was having too much fun as he's about to bust a neck. Crane's humor extended to the supernatural as well. A 1931 Wash Tub strip depicted a personification of death needing an orthodontist, showing his hero's ability to laugh death square in the face. Crane's work also showcased diverse cultures and societies. In a 1931 Wash Tub strip, our heroes venture to southern Louisiana, where they encounter swarthy Cajuns engaging in a local fugitive game of Big Dog. The scenery and dialogue well established the unique location chose by Crane for the strip story. In a 1938 wash tub strip, a foreign royal family's dialogue is replaced with pseudo Shakespeare, which is a written tool used by Marvel Stan Lee when scripting the speech of Asgardians and Olympians 25 years later. In a 1941 Captain Easy Sunday strip, Crane explored the jungle girl genre, providing a psychological description of how to tame her with a smack that was reminiscent of John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara in the Western comedy McClintock. His seventh innovation actually contributed to Superman. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster's Superman is a descendant of Captain Easy. The hero's direct precursor by the same artistic team was Slam Bradley, who essentially looked like Clark Kent. Created in 1937, he was a world adventurer who had a comedic sidekick named Shorty Morgan. And this dynamic duo had the same story set up as Roy Crane's Captain Easy and Wash Tubbs. In retrospect, the unique genius of Roy Crane wove together serious and humorous elements with a deft touch, making his readers laugh one moment and reflect the next. His work stands as a testament to the power of comic strips as a medium to convey sophisticated narratives and deep societal insights. His characters and stories grounded in the realities of their time, yet transcending those very realities, continue to resonate with readers of their reprints today. Through his work, Roy Crane has carved out a niche in the annals of comic history, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and entertain.